Let's start with Jorge Polanco. Moving on over to Seattle to help that offense that struggled last year. I mean, technically, some people are there. It was like a mid-offense, but meh. They needed a lot more to be a playoff team. So Polanco goes to Seattle. The Twins get Anthony DiSclefani, Justin Topa. Here it is. Darren Bowen, who's a lower-level prospect. And Gabriel Gonzalez, who's actually more of an upper-level prospect. There's some money being exchanged. It sounds like Minnesota's saving about $6.5 million because there's money being sent over from Seattle, plus Polanco this year, if you include the buyout, is making $11.25 million. He has a club option for next year. Anthony DiScalfani making $12 million. So, thoughts? I mean, what are the Twins doing? Again, it seems like they're getting rid of a lot of good players. They're cutting money so that they but can they're use cutting it money, elsewhere. But they're, they're broke. <laughs> they're turning the off season. They're broke. They're so broke. I mean, the pull ads yeah. are worth billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, but like, think about it. You're coming off a playoff season. Mm-hmm. They just announced they got 97% season ticket renewals. Mm-hmm. Okay? But they don't know if they're going to get them throwing an arbitrary number out there. 40 million or 45 million on their TV deal. So they're broke. Yeah, they sound like they're broke. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I, I will say this, though. Here's, here's Who my... was playing second base for them? Well, Polanco was hurt last year, though. I understand, but where is Edward Julian going? Well, I don't know. but it... Second base. So they last year, they, they DH Polanco a little bit. They used him at first a little bit here and there. They bounced him around a little bit. I mean, they're counting on Royce Lewis being healthy. Yep. They're counting on Correa being healthy. Yep. They're counting on Kirilov taking the next step at first base, right? They're going to use Farmer a lot, and they're going to put Julian at second base. Now, Polanco was a really good player for these guys, and he got some huge hits for him over the years. So it's a little bit surprising to see them get rid of him. But again, and they got money in the trade. So you know what that does for Mr. Polad? Yay, I got more money to sleep on at night. They promised they would spend it. On what? Better popcorn machines? Maybe a low-end starter, a reliever. Do Sclafani eat some innings? Maybe someone else eats some innings? Because they did lose some innings out of that starting rotation. I mean, Sonny Gray had a top three Cy Young year yeah, this I know. past season. They let him walk and didn't even try. No. Way too out of their price range. Right now, you're looking at Pablo Lopez, Joe Ryan. Di Sclafani's in there. Bailey Ober in a battle for the fifth spot. Louis Varland, among others. Hmm. I so, just, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, you're not thrilled. It's It's interesting... It's just interesting to me because the Twins could take this division easily if they just spend a little bit of money. It's like it's like nobody in the Central wants to win the division right now. Nobody in the AL Central. Your Guardians, Kip, they don't want to win the division. They haven't signed anybody. The White Sox are low-end, bottom-feeding right now. The Royals are trying a little bit. The Tigers have done some stuff. But the Twins, a team with the, clearly the best roster going into the offseason, have nickeled and dined it. It's kind of – if I'm a Twins fan, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm with you. I think uh... – Normally in most divisions, you'll find at least one, two, if not three teams that are projected to finish near the top that are all competing for a top spot. The Central doesn't have that clear-cut winner. If you were to pick one, it might be those twins. So you should see all moves that would be going for it. Rarely do you find where you're just the lone team that looks in a position to win the division. So the trade doesn't move the needle for me too much for either team. Um, I think the twins are making this trade out of position of Luxury, the fact that they have the depth to be able to make this trade to save some money, I guess, with all their players around. Uh, but I, I I think this more is a, a catalyst trade for another one coming for either of them. I think this is a clearing space or clearing room so they can make one more. I think Seattle's close to done. I mean, Polanco is going to be probably in the middle of their lineup, mm-hmm. right? Well, when he's healthy, he's a good player. He's yeah. a great player, player when he's healthy. He's, he's, and he's... he's uh, you can move him around, a switch hitting infielder. You can play most of the positions. He's a he's a useful guy to have on that team. And when he's right, he's an impactful bat. It's just you got to get him on that field. Agreed. Uh, Seattle what's improving the, themselves here. The, I mean, Seattle Topa's like, a good reliever. Seattle like, and we make fun of the fifty four percent thing all the time. But yeah. they like do like these little tiny improvements. They never go. We're gonna full splash it because they are working same thing off a very strict guideline budget. So Jerry DePoto has to do this. He has to nickel and dime and improve incrementally. I mean, that team, we're looking at it right now on the screen. I mean, that team's okay. Is the offense better than last year? It's definitely a different looking offense. It's a different offense. Um, I guess. 
I mean, Garver helps yeah. for sure. Polanco helps for sure. Julio's not going to have as bad of a first half as he had last year, and that's kind of put him behind the eight ball to start. Raleigh's yeah. a good player. France didn't have a great year last year. Rayleigh, I really like him and left. They brought back Mitch Hanniger, like Seattle's favorite son. So, I, I mean, listen, are, but is it good enough to compete with the Rangers and the Astros? That's the question. And I know they lost last year on the last day, but is it good enough? I mean, their starting pitching is pretty solid. Now, why don't they trade some of their prospects to the White Sox for Dylan Cease? Like, they could trade Miller. They could Woo. trade Wu. They could trade Gilbert. They could trade – Kirby. Kirby. They're not prospects. All Those for Cease, and it would be a perfect pitching. trade. Yeah, young, young, controllable. I'm all for that. Jerry, you make that trade tomorrow. You like to trade everybody. Make that trade. That I way, think that was that way you know what? You would get – you give away four – and you get a five, so that means it's fifty-four. So you know, so, <laughs> figure this out. Here. They have a great young starting rotation. The Mariners do. Uh, agree. It's, it's probably do. the best top to bottom rotation in baseball right now. Would you agree? One through five. One through five, depending on who the fifth guy is. Yeah. Well, Miller and Wu are the bottom two. Castillo. Castillo's good. Kirby. Kirby. I think they're both ones. Gilbert. Gilbert could be a one. He's at least a two. And then Miller and Wu. Yeah. And Dylan C's for Miller and Wu. I mean, no. There you go. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Kip, just to rem- – uh, just to You trade their five. You, you trade your five for a four. You're moving on up. See, Jerry, see how this works? I think their math's a little more <laughs> That's 54. In-depth. It's always got to be a five and a four. Kip, there was a rumor. I think Nightingale put it out that the Mariners had a combo with the White Sox about Dylan C's. And a lot of yeah. Mariners fans especially were like, what? We don't need that. Why, why are we going to do that? And they were like, oh, maybe they'd trade young starters – I mean, it, nothing to nothing to do with Cease. I, I love Cease. It just doesn't seem like the team that would be the fit for him. I, I agree. That's not the uh, – unfortunately for AJ and his socks, I don't think that's the team that will be pulling the trigger on that one. I, I no. I said that yesterday when Bob Nightingale reported that. That wasn't a that wasn't a, a realistic thing. That was no. that seemed like the White Sox putting it out there that there's another team interested so other teams would be like, oh, no, the Mariners are interested. We better up our ante. When in reality, that didn't seem like a, a realistic fit. No. Um. By the way, Blake Snell's not signing with the Mariners. There's still a lot of talk. I think it's mostly from fans. They'll like come up with ideas and be like, and then we sign Snell because he wants to be here. I'm like, stop. I mean, even if he doesn't get what he thinks he's going to get, the Yankees, if we believe that, offered, what, 6150 Do you think the Mariners will match that? Hell no. Oh, hell no. Hell no. So I, I do give credit to the Mariners. They're going with a very different look. To me, this is, I dated someone, we had a bad breakup, I'm going to completely switch it up. They had power, they struck out too much, so I'm going to the completely other direction. Uh, Polanco strikes out a lot. I'm saying their lineup in general, though, will have less swing and miss in it than it did last year. I mean, a little bit. It's hard when you trade Suarez, who like led the league in strikeouts the last five years. And Teoscar, Te who strikes struck out, out a lot. lot. Garber doesn't strike out a ton. No. I don't know. It's it'll be interesting to see how this plays out for the mayor. I mean, listen, you know, Jerry Depoto is not afraid to make the moves. I give him credit. I wish he could. I wish the Mariners every once in a while make the big splash, but they haven't so far. And uh, go from there. This was the time to do it. Agreed. Yeah. For for the Twins, I will say this: I'm a fan of Edward Julian. His defense needs work. They clearly believe that he can stick at second base. I think he is going to be a fantastic offensive player. He already has been. I mean, this past season he was great. So they said, we don't really have a full-time spot for Jorge Polanco. They could use another bullpen arm. They get one in Justin Topa, who's coming off a great season. They get an upper echelon prospect who we'll learn more about in just a moment as J.J. Cooper has a little breakdown for us that will run at some point. So I think for the Twins, I understand where they're coming from. They looked at a logjam and said, okay, we can get something for this guy and we can save some money to use elsewhere. They need to fill innings in their rotation. I don't think they're comfortable with what they have right now. Okay. Uh, fair. Fine. Fair. 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 Fair assessment. I mean, I, I mean, I wish they would have brought back Sonny Gray if they were really trying to go for it. But I mean, Discofani's a nice pitcher. Topo will help him in the back end of the bullpen. And if Gonzalez pans out to an outfield prospect, they need in. Guess what? The biggest news for the Twins was Byron Buxton said he's going to play center field. He's back. Did you say <laughs> Twins fest? I'm back. I'm yeah. back. Uh, we'll see. I hope he is because he's great when he's out there, but he hasn't been out there very much. He hasn't played center field since, I think it was August of 2022. I know he didn't play last year at all. No, he did not. And Correa had the plantar fasciitis mm-hmm. most of the year. 
I think he's going to have a better year. He looked great in the playoffs, but I think he's going to have a better year. Do you think Correa regrets signing there now? No. No? Why do you say that? Well, he signed a long-term deal, and they're just like, we lose Sonny Gray, now we're trading away Polanco. Now we're just, it's like... I think he knew what he was signing up for. You think? Like, yeah, that, that payroll's going to be Kip, in the 140 range. Chip, if you if you signed a long-term deal with a team, and you're like, all right, we just won the division, we're, we won the playoff, we won a playoff round for the first time in 20 years, are we uh, are we going for it? And they're like, no, we're... Tra- is, that, is that kind of the trade-off, though? You sign that big deal, and you know your team's going to be a little bit handcuffed just by you? Is, is that the case? I mean, he signed I mean, for well, significantly I mean, less than he was going to get from San Francisco and from the Mets, remember? Be that as it may, AJ is right, where it's like you're not pumped just to see the team kind of not go for it, especially when we just talked about how it's probably their clear division to win. Um, so you want to you wanna go there not only because it's the great deal for yourself, but for a great deal as a team and to win there. And one thing worked out, the deal worked out, but now – when they start trading away guys, especially top of the rotation guys like Sonny and some other pleases, uh, you you just some your ears start to perk up a little bit. Like you start questioning, what are we doing here? And uh, you're hoping there's some moves to follow this, these other ones, I guess. With that being said, who's the best team in the AL Central? Is it not the Twins? I mean, it's still the Twins. They should be the heavy favorite. But they should the be. Twins. But they should be head and shoulders above everybody. They could have had the opportunity to be head and shoulders above everybody else. But this is an ongoing disease in our game right now, is you wait for this moment as a team, right? Most of these teams went through pain for their fan bases, where there were multiple years of garbage. And then all you expect is when you're at this point, you're going to push some chips in. And you don't care if you're going to take some chips out later on, right? It's just that's not how the game is operating right now. And I do think it has a lot to do with the team on the other end of this trade. It's it's 54%. I, why why do the push in and then the push out when you can kind of just hang around, hope that dude stay healthy and be the next Diamondbacks? I think it's kind of similar to our, uh, my first years in Cleveland. I think with the way this division is scattered right now, I think the Twins will probably be in first at the All-Star break anyways. And I think they can go kind of see what holes they have and then go out and get that piece and fill it in later down the year instead of just signing it now. 